first of all, Beat Beat Rays, uh, VMware is making it happen big time uh, from a financial point of view. Data center uh, AI is propelling uh, the company. And remember, there's two ways that Broadcom makes money in chips and AI. They connect AI compute and the compute itself. So some pretty interesting stuff came out uh, on the call. First of all, VMware. Uh, they have taken uh, 8,000 disparate SKUs and narrowed that down to four distinct uh, offerings. I, I know the company is taking a, a lot of heat for it, but this is a required thing for the company to do, and, and they're behind. Well, how about VCF, right? They're putting uh, VCF full cloud and full virtualization in one package. They signed uh, nearly 3,000 of their top 10,000 uh, customers uh, to do what Hawk said is build a self-service virtual private cloud on-prem. I think that's pretty darn good uh, where we are today. Uh, financially, VMware, uh, there's uh, a new metric called annual booking uh, value. That's essentially taking a, a long-term, you know, let's say you've got a three-year contract and annualizing it. Uh, with VMware, it's up going from 1.2 billion uh, to 1.9 billion in the second quarter. So that was quarter on uh, uh, quarter. And, you know, Hawk really kind of ended, you know, in my opinion, talking about the full stack value prop, right? Compelling price point, very attractive price point, whole stack, vSphere, uh, plus networking, storage, ops, and cloud. Real quick, um, switches. Kind of victory lap here. They doubled the amount of switches they sold year on year with uh, PAM5, uh, Jericho 3, uh, citing Arista Networks, Dell, Juniper, Supermicro. They doubled their shipments of PCI Express uh, uh, switches and NICs in the AI backend, right? And that's inside of the rack. And then finally, this is kind of a victory lap on AI versus uh, fiber channel. Seven of the largest AI clusters and deployment use Broadcom Ethernet, but this is the kicker. Next year, we expect all, all 100% of mega scale GPU deployments to be on Ethernet. Octan, Charlie Kawas are making it happen. Yes. Yeah, good analysis there. I mean, you know, I always say when their earnings come out, that uh, Broadcom just does what Broadcom does. I mean, everything kind of up into the right, directionally going well. I don't know if you saw the question that, you know, Stacey Razgan asked this really long kind of deep dive question into yeah. the company. And it's kind of basically asking if he was sort of underestimating the impact of AI. Hawk gave him like a two word answer, very Hawk like, like basically, the, uh, it is what it is. I mean, that's not what he said, but more or less, like, this is what I can tell you. Um, and when you're Hawk and you're generating, you know, something like 60% of revenue as EBITDA, you can pretty much do anything you want. The 10 for 1 split's interesting, timely. The stock was really expensive. I mean, on a dollar per share standpoint, it's 1600 And I think there's this trend line with companies of making shares more accessible to retail investors as that continues to expand. And Pat, you know, you you covered a lot of the kind of the ground, but what, what I said in, a, in in my kind of social commentary, that's my new blogging, by the way, I just tweet. Um, by the way, it's not tweeting, I X now, because I, apparently Twitter's not a thing anymore. But um, was it, look, Broadcom may be the second most interesting play for AI. Literally, the second most interesting near-term play for AI. Um, there are a lot of other companies sort of in the mix, but if you kind of look across portfolio from everything from enterprise software, like what you talked about with VMware, to integration with network, to the implementation, development, and deployment of XPUs, which are AI accelerators, which a lot of people don't understand. But when you hear about these AI accelerators from hyperscale cloud providers, there's really only two companies that are partnering with these companies to build them. It's Marvell and it's Broadcom. And so Broadcom has a number of the wins. They've got a huge upside on it and the fact is is this whether it's ultra ethernet or just traditional networking for ai huge huge opportunity we've heard numbers like 25 percent of the spend on on ai infrastructure is going to be in the network um these massive clusters create more back end and front end needs for networking and broadcom is one of the only places to get this stuff and so it's a really really compelling story 
for those that are kind of trying to get on this front loaded hardware wave of buying and yeah. investing um, in AI. So, you know, there's a lot to like there. Uh, the company is so well run, it's so efficient. Um, you know, and by the way, it's an, it, the initial sort of results it's getting with, um, with VMware are impressive. I mean, it's growing faster straight out the gate. They cut like two thirds of the workforce. They cut like hundreds of partners. <laughs> it may have been more than that. Um, they cut all kinds of unnecessary spending and then here they grow again, yeah. you know? And so that, isn't that the most hawk thing ever though, Pat? Like, you know, basically everybody says, you know, it's going to be, def it's going to be completely culture killing, uh, channel killing. All, you and I were like the only ones that basically came out and said, I don't see it. I just don't think people get it. I mean, he's got the history. He's did it with, with CA, you know, he's done it with, um, uh, Brocade, Mantech. Mantech. I'm just trying to think down the line, like all of them got better after the acquisition and why yeah. everybody thought this wouldn't. And, you know, I hate to say it, but everybody's wrong. Everybody's wrong. So far, it's only taken a few quarters, Pat. Well, sometimes people confuse churn and angst with doing the, the wrong thing. You know, Hawk was really clear on where he thought they were with subscriptions. I'm, I'm going to quote him here. Moving to subscription. Well, in VMware, we are very slow compared to, I mean, a lot of guys, Microsoft, Salesforce, and Oracle. You know, that, that was his quote, basically. And, and you know, they could be a company that, that doesn't change, right? Um, but they've decided that they need to modernize. And modernization, uh, so, you know, everybody's not a, a fan every time it happens. So, well, stuff happens. I think you I, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think you and I were never saying there'd never be churn or some angst across some customers. I think what we were saying is that, A, and I said this in my first write-up, if you're not part of where Broadcom makes money with VMware, things are going to change. Yeah. Hawk, you know, and Hawk didn't raise prices. He What he did is he combined the entire stack. And, you know, if you were paying a million dollars for 50,000 VMs over annual, that was a ridiculous uh sweetheart deal that makes no financial sense for the company and things are going to change absolutely and and you know just to be clear i am 100 in line with you we were not ignoring the fact there would be angst or there would be churn we were just saying that it will work it will exactly. work and it, it is working and, and he's okay to even if it was a little smaller if it was more profitable the fact is though it's getting bigger and it's going to be more profitable and it's more efficient you know, this is kind of like all the the Musk hatred about X. He got rid of what eighty percent of the workforce, and you know, although it's a private company, there was so much media sort of that it's losing all its revenue, and it, it's but it's just it's not actually correct, and engagement's actually rising. So a lot of times people want things to be true, so they find an angle to make them true. Um, you know, analysts are pretty good at this too, by the way. Anyway, um, all right, so that's it. That was my take. Uh, you know, good results and. Uh, very Broadcom of them.